Hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. So um, here we are once again in the lesson. It is Wednesday. It is the third class of this week. Um, it seems like tonight or I mean, like this week, we are um, going to be having um, five classes, I think, because if you guys remember last week, we had to skip one. But yeah, I'm going to confirm that with you tomorrow because right now I am not necessarily certain if we are actually going to be having that class um for tomorrow. But well, I mean for um for Friday. But uh tonight we are going to be dealing with something different. We're going to be learning about um models with multiple uses, which means that we're going to continue talk. Um, talking about models, um, we are also going to be touching base with verbs of belief and, um, of course, creating some examples with um, both um, different verbs or, I mean, both different sections of verbs. But um, as you guys already know, it is the usual thing to do here. Um, we are going to try and uh, go ahead and discuss a question for tonight. And what I was thinking is working on something a little bit trickier than we did last time, uh, than we did yesterday, to be more specific. We are going to be talking about, um, it's, you know, a possibility, okay? I want you to be as open-minded as possible. I want you to be as creative as possible. Because sometimes when we um, get asked this kind of question, we sometimes think with the pocket or with the wallet instead of thinking with, you know, the imagination. Um, the question is regarding traveling. So the idea is that I will ask you, if you had the chance to go anywhere in the world, where would you go and what would you like to do? Okay, the thing is that, uh, as I said, sometimes we have this um, thing that we... Um, like leave our dreams aside because we're thinking with the pocket, we're thinking with the money that we have instead of thinking with, you know, the dream that we may have. So please try to think with your dreams, try to think with the, um, the desire that you have instead of thinking with um, the possibility that you may have right now. So if you had the chance, if like, you know, a millionaire came to your house and told you, okay, I'm gonna send you to whatever country you want. Um, and you just have to pick where you want to go. So think that I am that millionaire uh, and tell me, where would you like to go? And what activities would you like to do there? Okay, like what are some of the things you would like to do at that place? So let's get started, started with that. Um, I think that tonight we're going to start by hearing from um, Luis. So Luis, tell me, if you had the chance to go anywhere in the world, where would you go? And what would you like to do there? So, good evening. <clears throat> uh, you are telling about a place that I like to visit. Mm -hmm. Like a country, uh, any country in the world. Dutch. Right. I like to visit uh, Egypt. Oh, and what would you like to do there in Egypt? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the point is, uh, <clears throat> when I was a child, I... Uh, we always studied the history about the pyramids. So that is the point, my point. I like to visit that place. Mm, okay. So you would like to go to Egypt and visit the pyramids of Giza? Yes. Yes. Oh. All right. Yes. That sounds nice. Sounds like a really nice adventure. I would like to come along. All right. Yes. Nate. Nice, 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 nice. Great. Thank you. All right. You're very welcome. Moving on. Let's hear now maybe from um, Jenny. In your case, if you had the chance to travel anywhere in the world, where would you like to go and what would you like to do there? By the moment, I don't think any place. Maybe Spain? I don't know. Spain. And if you had to, a chance to go to Spain, what would you do in Spain? Yes. ¿Qué haría en España? Uh, visit, visit to visit my friend in the Mallorca, Mallorca Island. 
Hmm. Okay. So you would like to go visit a friend at Mallorca. That sounds uh, like a very interesting and also, you know, very planned idea. So nice. Very nice. Uh, visiting Spain and going to Mallorca. Great. Um, how about the case for Lillian? If you, Lillian, had the chance to go um, anywhere in the world, where would you like to go and what would you like to do there? Okay, in my case, I want to go to Islas Bora Bora that mm -hmm. are uh, in Guyana, Francesa, I guess, in the place. <laughs> but I, when I watch that place, I, I see, wow, that's a beautiful place because there are some houses inside the ocean mm -hmm. and it's very clear. In, in the floor, the, they have spring and without what do you say? windows. ¿Cómo se llama eso? Yeah, um, con ventanas, windows. Uh -huh. and, and the floor is on the screen and you can watch the animals that are passing there inside the ocean and I, I get it that is a, an amazing experience and I would like to to be snorkeling to have a snorkel to do snorkeling mm -hmm. there and visit the the island and watch the culture of the people that live in that place. Okay, it is nice and it's great that I told you think with your mind, not with your pockets, because Bora Bora is one of the most <laughs> yes. expensive places in the world. Yeah, yes, I know. <laughs> it is very difficult to get there and it is very expensive also to spend time there. But I do know it is beautiful. I mean, it's if I had the chance, if I ever had the chance to go um, like on a honeymoon or something like that, I will pick that as my destination because... Um, as you have described it, it's basically heaven on earth because they have like floating houses or houses on top of water. Um, and as you said, the water is basically crystal clear. It's super, super um, clear and clean. And, and it's just amazing. At, at least from the pictures and videos that I have seen, I have never been there, but from the pictures and videos that I have seen, it is just an amazing place on earth. So yeah, Bora Bora will be an amazing destination. Great. All right, moving on. How about we hear now from uh, Lorena? So tell us, Lorena, if you had the chance to go anywhere in the world, where would you like to go and what would you like to do there? Well, I would like to go on a, on a cruise to Europe mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I had I had taken a cruise to other, other places and I would like to do, to do that. Um, and I would like to go to Africa because I would like to be like, I don't know, with the animals or working, working with them or looking at them. <laughs> and I would like that. I would like to be there. Okay, great. So going on a cruise, on a cruise ship, as they call it, I think is, you know, it's not that expensive, or at least I have heard no. that it's not really that expensive. It's not expensive, yes. Yeah, because of all the amenities that you have and all the advantages that you have. And probably when you talk about cruises in in, in, in um Europe, like you have the chance, you know, to um to, to see get off and to yeah, to yeah. the city. Yeah. Yeah, to see different cities and visit different places. So it's it's very interesting. Um Actually, earlier today, I was discussing that idea with my girlfriend. We were talking about, you know, the, the, the thing that happened with the submarine. Um, and I told her that, you know, it's, it's a desire of mine to go on a cruise ship. I would love to go on a cruise ship. And she was like, okay, you're going to have to go alone because I don't <laughs> like the sea. She says that she, you know, she doesn't feel well at sea. Um, and it's true because with I have an, an uncle who loves fishing. We have gone fishing with him twice uh yet uh thus far and she never wants to come with because she says that she's afraid of the sea um i have told her that you know accidents at sea don't happen that often they are very rare 
uh, but still, she is afraid of of going into the sea. So <laughs> yeah, it seems like you know when I have the chance to go into um, a cruise ship, I have I'll have to do it on my own. I will convince her. You can give my telephone number to her. <laughs> that would be amazing. That would yeah. be amazing. I mean, before that, I got have to get the money, but still. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, it will, be, it will be great. It will be great because, yeah, cruise ships are very interesting because you have the chance to see different places and you don't have to worry about basically anything. Anything, anything yeah, yeah. You don't have to worry about anything uh -huh. during those uh, few days. So, great. Sounds like a very nice plan. All right. Um, moving on. How about Ciro? In your case, Ciro. If you had the chance to go anywhere in the world, where would you like to go? And what would you like to do there? Okay, please, teacher. Um, if you had the chance to visit any country, to go any place in the world, where would you like to go? And what would you like to do there? I like to go visit the uh, Brazilian. Mm, okay. And what would you like to do in Brasilia? For the forest or the river. All right, great. So, um, Brazil. I have heard that you know it's it's a very fun place to visit. Uh, it's also very a little bit dangerous. It or at least I have heard so. Um, so it's you know a place that we can visit, but probably taking care of ourselves and watching out for where we're gonna go. Um, but yeah, if you have the idea of going into like nature and visiting like natural resources in Brazil, I, I think it will be a great example, you know, of a place to visit in Brazil. Um, so yeah, I think it would be great to go and visit um, some of those natural resources in Brazil. So nice. Sounds like a very nice idea. Another advantage of visiting Brazil, from my perspective, is that it's relatively easy to like communicate. It's not like the easiest thing, but still, you know, you will have the chance to um, catch on some words or some phrases and also establish a little conversation because the languages are not really that um, different from one another. So I think it will be a great experience going to Brazil. So nice, very nice. All right, uh, moving on. How about Imelda? In your case, if you had the chance to go anywhere in the world, where would you like to go and what would you like to do there? Well, uh, good evening, everyone. I would like to go to Mexico because the, their the culture and because I, I want to try the real Mexican food. All right. Mexico because of the culture and because of the Mexican food. I feel like Mexico, depending on where you visit, or at least I have heard so as well, or I have seen in some videos, has like a different approach of culture. Like they have a similar way of dressing, but they don't dress the same. And now that I mentioned that, um, I remember that I also saw a video about that from here, from El Salvador, that even the, the, like the cultural dances, see si esas bailes con las faldotas, um, they are different depending on where from El Salvador you are. So I saw another video that was a contrast in Mexico, depending on where in Mexico the people were, um, that, was, that was also was going, was going to command the way in which they were going to wave um, the the skirts so it's it's very interesting you know going to a place where like it's the same country but the culture is different i think it will be great and also because of uh what you, what you mentioned as well trying or having a taste of the authentic mexican food because we have tried it many times we haven't really ate, eaten the real mexican food so i think it will be a great experience good 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 Yes. And do you know how hard um, is it to get a Mexican visa? Is it, is it a hard process? Yes, it's a hard process. I have heard yes. so as well. Yeah, I have heard so. <laughs> well, maybe that's... Okay. Sorry? It's more hard for the, the American visa. Oh, okay. So that's a new one because I thought American visa was the hardest. Okay, that's a new one for me. Well, but still, you know, if you're able to overcome that challenge, after that, it's only enjoyment what comes. Well, moving on then. Let's hear now from Gabriela Garcia. How about you, Gabriela? 
If you had the chance to visit any country, go to any uh, country in the world, where would you like to go and what would you like to do there? Uh, okay, uh, if I have the chance to travel, I would like to visit Korea and maybe I can visit all places that I have watched in the Korean series and maybe of, uh, I could taste all the Korean diet. Mm. Okay, so kind of similar to the idea that, um, that, that Imelda has, but in your case, it will be in a, in a completely different country. It will be with Korea. So yeah, that sounds great. I mean, Asian countries in general are becoming more and more popular now that the world is also interconnected. And uh, I feel like, you know, we have expanded our, our frontiers. Like now we get information or media from different places. And that also brings the world together in a more general way. And we have different desires because back in the day, people didn't really know about other countries. Like even in my case, my dad, he is very old fashioned, I would say. Because when my sister, for example, she says that she wants to migrate to Italy, she is even trying to learn Italian uh, at this point. So when she mentions that, that she wants to go to Europe, he's like, no, why don't you try to go to like the US or Canada or something in America? Because he's, you know, like old fashioned. But now it's like different. Like this generation knows more about other countries or we are now open to thinking or to uh, learning about other, other cultures and countries. So we have that aspiration of like going to other places. So Asia is one of those new frontiers and many people nowadays have that desire of like, you know, visiting an Asian country. So I or think- Thailand. Thailand, Thailand will be a hustle. I think Thailand will be a hustle. Cuando hablamos de un hustle sería como algo, o sea, bien interesante, sí. So yeah, I think Thailand will be a hustle because I have seen videos of like how Thai people are and some of the things that they do in Thailand, in, in Thailand, yeah. And uh, it is interesting. I would like to see, you know, how one of us can do in Thailand. Well, moving on then. How about we hear now from Gabriela Cortez? Good evening. Evening. Oh, sorry. The question is, if you had the chance to go to another country or another place, where would you like to go and what would you like to do there? I would like to, to go from Colo um, Colombia. Hmm. And what would you like to do in Colombia? Um, the culture and, and the food. I think I, I don't waste any kind of food, but I, I seem interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah, in my case, I haven't really ever... Oh, yeah, I have. I've only tried... Arepas once. Uh, I thought it was interesting, the flavor, I, uh, but still, the problem with arepas is that they say that they are Venezuelan, but some people say they're Colombian. So it's it's tricky there, you know, with the topic of the arepa. But I have tried arepas. That's the only thing that I, I, I have tried from Colombia. Um, but I don't really know much about their um, cuisine. I have heard, you know, things on the... Um, I don't know if you guys watch Caracol, the channel, Caracol, the TV, TV channel, Caracol. But I, I mean, me and my family, we used to, um, to watch it a lot before uh, with uh, the program that they have, the show Sábados Felices. So we used to watch that a lot. And from there, we learned some words about food in Colombia. But we haven't really tried any of the food. And I think it will be very interesting. I mean, most of the reasons why people visit places sometimes are because of that, because of the food. Um, the only place that I think people don't want to visit because of the food is the U.S. Because it's basically everywhere. So, yeah. All right. So, great. Colombia. Great option. How about we hear now from you, Carla? In your case, if you had the chance to go anywhere in the world, where would you like to go and what would you like to do there? Um, I would like to go uh, to Peru and visit a specific Machu Picchu. 
I mean, this is an amazing place and I want to walk there and take so many pictures. Okay. Memories from this moment. Great, very nice. Yeah, Peru or, I mean, Machu Picchu packages are more and more, um, what can we say, accessible to us now. It's like there are more and more uh, companies that are offering that package. So I feel like, you know, it has become a little bit of an accessible plan. And also Machu Picchu was part of the, of the conversation earlier today with my girlfriend because we were saying that um, I saw a package the other day that went for a it was i think sixteen hundred dollars so a thousand six hundred um i think it's very expensive but the thing is that they had or the trip lasted for almost nine days it was like eight days and seven nights something like that so it's a very long trip i feel like you know just to go see machu picchu and see a little bit of the culture all the places in 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 peru i feel like it's a long time like eight days and seven nights it's it's a pretty long time so i feel like that package is not you know like um tourist friendly or not budget tourist friendly but with people who have the money well if you have it and you want to you know take the chance go because yeah that will be a great experience i feel because yeah spending more time in the country will allow you with more time to get to see more places get to discover more about the people or get to try more of the cuisine uh but yeah going to Peru. That will be a great thing as well. And it's easy because, of course, you're not going to need any other language. It's only Spanish that you're going to need. Um, it's a difference, of course, if you go to Chile, because Chile is completely different. No, nah, it's just kidding. All right. And uh, how about we hear from Walter? In your case, Walter, if you had the chance um, to go to another place, like another country, where would you like to go and what would you like to do there? Uh, good evening, good evening, evening. teacher. Uh, in my case, uh, I would like to uh, visit uh, Canada. Mm, okay. I would like to uh, visit Canada to, to live, live and work in this, in this country. And, All right. and study too. All right. Um, so it's the same idea that I have. I hadn't shared that uh, oh, tonight. At least I didn't have the, the chance yet to share my perspective on the topic or on the question. Um, but it's the same idea that I have. I, for example, have had this dream since I was like, um, what? 13 years old, probably. Since I was very young, I had the desire of moving to Canada. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, it's like um, an idea. I would love to, to like have the chance to move, to live, study and work in Canada. It's one of the best countries according to many rankings. Uh, you know, it's, it's very, very nice to live there according to many rankings. So yeah, it will be, I think a great experience to, um, to have the chance to go to Canada. So great option. Great, great option. See, thanks, thanks. All right. Um, how about uh, in your case, um, Leslie? If you had the chance to um to go to any other country or place in the world, where would you like to go, and what would you like to do? Okay. Um, in my case, uh, I would like to go to Switzerland because uh, it has the best economy in the world the best human development, and it's simply beautiful. Uh, I would like to live there. All right, great. Yeah, it's also another great option, you know. Um, people sometimes, or like, as I said earlier, older people sometimes don't, um, you know, don't see how we as the younger generation are now trying to go into like different places. But I feel like we have that chance of exploring and like getting to know more about other places. So yeah, I mean, having the chance to move abroad into the place that we desire, I feel like it's the proper way to go if you are ever going to move. How about you, Josue, in your case, if you had the chance to go to another country, where would you like to go? 
And what would you like to do there? Okay. Uh, I will travel to Japan. Hmm. Because uh, I think they have uh, the best, the most interesting culture. And I would, I would like to taste the real ramen. All right. Um, have you ever researched on like where would you like to go and try the ramen? Like, do you have any idea of where? Uh, or like a restaurant that you would like to try ramen from? Yes, yes. Uh, from my uh, in front of my my house, uh, there are the, there are a, a restaurant, but this uh, this ramen is is fake. It's too bad. No, I mean in in Japan. Like, have you ever researched or like, ha buscado alguna vez información de en Japón donde le gustaría probar el ramen? Uh, uh, in the street, in the street, mm -hmm. uh, I, I see, uh, I've seen uh, uh, some videos that, um, uh, that you can, that you can find a, uh, um, un vendedor, un vendedor ambulante. Mm. And this is a uh, this is a uh, real ramen. This is a uh, <laughs> a, um, a good ramen. Okay, great. So, uh, ¿cómo sería ese caso? Sería un street vendor. Sí, un street vendor. So it's like uh, if you would try uh, to try um, tacos or some sort of tacos in Mexico, they say that tacos from street vendors are way better than tacos from like restaurants. So. Okay. There, there you have it. All right, great. Um, in terms of ramen, I remember that once I tried to make it with my sisters. I mean, with my sister back then. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't the best experience of our lives. It wasn't the best thing we tried. De verdad que nos tardamos casi dos días en prepararlo, pero nos quedó un poquito mal. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's hard, I think, to, to make ramen. All right, uh, and how about you, Sandra? If you had the chance to go anywhere in the world, where would you like to go? And what would you like to do there? Sorry, come again? Oh, se está bastante lento. Se, se, se escucha que decía I would like to travel, pero el resto ya no lo no lo capté. Sorry. Bueno, vamos a escuchar the, from the last person. Esta noche quería escuchar de todos. Así, oh, wait, no, we have two more. Um, Switzerland. Oh, Switzerland. That would be an amazing place to go. Yeah, I have seen so many videos from there. And it, some, it seems to be a fairy tale place. You know, Switzerland, all the pictures and videos that sh people share from there are just mind blowing. So, yeah, I think it would be the perfect destination. Very expensive, though. It is very, very expensive, but still, you know, uh, luxuries are paid. So, yeah. How about the case of Melanie? In your case, Melanie, if you had the chance to travel anywhere in the world, where would you like to go and what would you like to do there? Um, I think I would like to travel to Italy because of the places and the food. Mm -hmm. All right. So going to Italy because of the places and the food. Um, what place would you like to visit mostly from Italy? Um, Venice. Oh, sounds great. Yeah, it's a, it sounds like a very interesting place. I have seen videos and also I have seen like the place in some movies before. And it seems like it is, you know, a um, what you may call it like a very interesting place to, to be at. Um, a little bit dangerous, I would say, or at least from my perspective, 
it would be a little bit dangerous, but still, um, going to Venice. Sounds great. Muy bien, bueno, creo que sí mejor vamos a movernos ya a esto, que será el tema de hoy, que les decía, models with multiple uses. Um, so here, what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be analyzing these models and then we're going to be providing examples for each of them. So please try to think about your examples as we are reviewing the model verbs. So here we have um, the verb must. In this case, if you are wondering what is the verb that we're using, it's going to be must. See, must is the modal verb that we use for this um, example. Here, we're going to see should. And here, once again, we are going to see should. So um, the first example is you must be on time for the interview. So here, what uh, we use it for is to establish a rule to make clear that this person, the person who we are talking to, um, has to follow this rule. They must respect this um, time frame. So you must be on time for the interview. That is it. That is what is said, and that is what has to be done. Then we had um, the second example when we use should is, it's very cold. You should wear a hat. It's very cold. You should wear a hat. Uh, so that's the second one when we use should. Should is mostly for a advice. It's used when we are trying to tell someone what they are supposed to do um, because of their better, um, what can we say it? How, or how can we say it? For the better state of being. So when we provide um, like a, like a suggestion to someone, that's when we use the verb should. And then we have should with the use of um, an idea, you know, using the verb should as an idea. Everyone should visit Paris once in their life. Everyone should visit Paris once in their life. O sea, in this case, we're going to use this one more as an opinion. The idea behind this sentence is that we are expressing an opinion. Everyone should visit parents once in their life means that we have that idea, okay? We have that opinion about visiting Paris. It is not like um, an obligation as we were discussing yesterday. It's not an obligation, not at all. It's just my perspective. I feel like everyone should do it. But if you don't do it, it's up to you. It's up to your desires. It's up to your um, possibilities. But the idea, or my idea at least, is that everyone should visit Paris once in their life. All right. So uh, now, as I said before, what I want us to do is to go ahead and work on examples. I have here a few examples just to guide us, you know, to see how we can um, like use them in the, or put these models to different uses. The first one is, or the first example that I have is I must pay my taxes every year. I must pay my taxes, my taxes every year. Then we have taxes must be paid off every year. It's, this is like a variation to the first example. Then we have don't go alone to, supermark uh, to the supermarket at night. It might be dangerous. Don't go alone to the supermarket at night. It might be dangerous. Then we have you mustn't smoke when you feel gas. You mustn't smoke when you feel gas. And the last example, you should have your car on while filling gas. You shouldn't have your car on while filling gas. So these are um, some of the examples that we have. Ahora, aquí ustedes pueden ver una pequeña diferencia. Cuando utilizamos el must, si es necesario que utilicemos, ¿verdad? Eh, por ejemplo, si utilizamos primero un, um, ¿cómo sería? Un sujeto. Entonces, es bastante sencillo, ¿sí? simplemente decimos lo que el sujeto debe hacer. Entonces, en este caso, ¿verdad? Lo mismo. Taxes must be paid off um, every year. Aquí, el must se utiliza para la obligación que tenemos de hacer algo. Ahora, en este caso, aquí, el, el model verb que se está utilizando es el verbo might. Might se, re, se utilizará para hablar acerca de posibilidades. Entonces, vamos a decir, don't go alone to the supermarket at night. It might be dangerous. Significa que podría ser um, 
podría ser complicado o peligroso. Sí, don't go alone to the supermarket at night. It might be dangerous. Podría ser peligroso. Ok, entonces ese es podría. Sí, es para una situación hipotética. Then we have you mustn't smoke while filling gas. Esto es una obligación. Es básicamente una orden. Sí, cuando decimos you mustn't, cualquiera que incluya más, sea positivo o negativo, es básicamente una orden para algo que no se debe hacer. You mustn't smoke uh, when you fill gas. Si no debes fumar cuando eh, echas gasolina. Y luego tenemos uno que es más como, como les decía, como una sugerencia. You shouldn't have your car own while filling gas. You shouldn't have your car own while filling gas. Bueno, ahora vamos a hacer una actividad un poco distinta. Esta vez nos vamos a dividir. ¿sí? Primero que nada, el primer trabajo que vamos a hacer será buscar todos los eh, modal verbs. Creo que ustedes ya más o menos los conocen, ¿verdad? Ya los han utilizado, yo se los he mencionado incluso. Entonces, vamos a dividirnos en dos grupos, ¿sí? Buscamos todos los modal verbs y luego creamos dos oraciones por cada uno de los modal verbs. Así que nos vamos a dividir ahorita en los breakout rooms y en un momento vamos a regresar para eh, seguir trabajando y para poder ver cuáles fueron los ejemplos que hemos creado. Así que esa será la actividad de momento. Ahí tenían ustedes esos ejemplos eh, que les, les acabo de mostrar. Si quieren, lo que vamos a hacer es que les muestro una vez más los ejemplos. Así pueden tomar como una captura, ¿verdad? De, de cómo se ven. Y pues um, luego ya ustedes pueden eh, basarse en ellos para crear sus propios ejemplos. Así que esa, esa será. Nos dividimos. Buscamos todos los modal verbs que utilizamos. Eh, luego creamos dos ejemplos por cada uno de los modal verbs. So, um, the breakout rooms are going to be open so you guys can start joining them and start working with your teams. Dos ejemplos, dijo, ¿verdad? Sí, que eligiéramos eh, los model verbs que hemos visto y eligiéramos, dijéramos dos oraciones, entiendo yo, por cada uno. Yes. Ok. Uh. Eh, si gustan, le pongo en el chat eh, los modal verbs y entiendo que tenemos que hacer dos oraciones por cada uno. No podemos dividir este como cada uno, ¿verdad? Ok. Eh, ok, I will choose um, show and I will do the sentences. In the chat. Uh, 
I'll choose food. Most y can también, ¿verdad? Sí. Creo que se me olvidó poner can. Um, Mike. My and might.
another one with my. Another one with my. We just have one. I eat my rain to tonight. Another one because there are we have to have two but each one. Mm. We might have the class, have the extra class. No, because we want to use two verbs. I don't know. We might have the extra class this Friday. Teacher says that the is the maybe no. Yeah, maybe. The washing sure, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it would be we should have no. We could have a class this Friday. The other class. But it's in past, no? Another. Mm, another? Another one? With May? Or with with No, I, I, I ask you. I ask you. Is, ah, with... It is another example. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, we can say you may go, they may go. They may, they may dress um, properly for the reunion. Or they must dress properly. I don't know, maybe both, huh? Dress like? Dress like a uh, vestir, appropriately. Ah, they may dress. dress properly, yeah. Oh. Okay, another example, we should, you should get to class early. Yes. And we have a, a minute to come in back with the class. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> okay, bye. All right, so let's see. Uh, do we have the examples? Bueno, no deje nada decirles. Fue interesante ver cómo cada grupo tuvo su acercamiento al trabajo porque hubo un grupo que simplemente decidió dividir la información y trabajar por su lado cada quien y hubo otro pues que estaban ahí, ¿verdad? Conversando y tratando de, um, de crear los ejemplos. So, yeah. The idea when we have breakout rooms, as I said, uh, in, the, in the very first class, is that uh, we have the chance, you know, to share with the classmates to like um, participate for a little bit. So please, when we have these sort of activities, it's more like for you guys to interact, for you to speak and um, talk with your classmates, not only for you to like go and, and be mute and uh, just work on your own and have like each of you guys the chance of working um, by yourself. Uh, the main objective is... Um, basically that um you know you have the the opportunity to conversate or to 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 practice your english so for next opportunities just try to do it that way because that's basically the objective that's what we are here for and that's basically the um the idea that we have all right to to talk and not only to go and just to create the examples um everyone on their side but anyway um let's see now some of the examples that you have, I have here from one group uh, that you guys use. Uh, okay, so you saw you sent the modal verbs, uh, which okay, are must, should, uh, would, could, and might and may. Those were the ones that you kind of missed there. But well, uh, you have one example from Jasmine. You shouldn't throw your garbage on the street. That is a very good example. You shouldn't throw your garbage on the street. Then uh, we have two examples from Carla and those read, I'm hungry, but I shouldn't 
uh, go out at night because it's dangerous. Okay, great. I shouldn't go. It, it is not necessary to say I shouldn't going. It's only go. I shouldn't go out at night because it's dangerous. Then we have, I have an exam next week. I should study, but I'm tired. Great. I should, uh, I, I have an exam next week. I should study, but I'm tired. That is a good example. Now we have two examples from uh, Gabriela and they read, I shouldn't have eaten that is spicy soup. My stomach hurts. Great. I shouldn't have eaten that spicy soup. My stomach hurts. And then we have, you should study English every day. You should study English every day. Bueno, aquí parece que casi que todos los ejemplos que tenemos son con should. Uh, no utilizamos de momento ni could, ni can, ni ninguno de los demás. Veamos, los demás ejemplos que tienen, ¿cuáles serían? Ok, Imelda. Bye. Rain tonight. Sorry? It might rain tonight. Oh, all right. It might rain tonight. Great. Very nice. That is a good example. Um, Jenny. Can I use your phone? Okay. Can I use your phone? That is using the... Um, En ese caso es diferente, porque en sí estamos más que todo haciendo una pregunta de sí o no, y además es una pregunta de habilidad. Entonces es un poquito diferente el uso, pero sí es un verbo modal. Al final de cuentas es un verbo modal, pero no está cumpliendo, digamos, su función al 100% de ser un verbo modal. Pero ahí, ahí vamos, ¿sí? Uh, muy bien, vamos a ver. Uh, Luis. May I go to the bathroom? To the bathroom, sorry. Okay, may I go to the bathroom? Great, that is a good example. Nice. Um, how about you, Lorena? He may ask to his mom before going out. Sorry? He may ask to his mom before going out. He may ask his mom. I said, yeah, nada más. He may ask ah, his, his mom. mom. Okay. Yeah, he may ask his mom before going out. Great, nice example. Um, Carla. Hey, teacher, I have an example with mind. Uh, I might the best in math class, in math class, if I propose it to myself. Okay, nice. That is a good example as well. Great. Um, all right. Now we have two more examples coming through the chat. One of them is, it might be easier if we work together. Great, <laughs> that is a good example. It might be easier if we work together. Um, all right, and the next one from Sandra is, I should have learned dance before the party. I should have learned, aquí si podríamos utilizar tú, miren. I should have learned to dance, sí, I should have learned to have learned to dance, porque tenemos dos verbos que están al lado. Entonces, ahí sí. Um, so, yeah, it would be, I should have learned to dance um, to before the party. So, yeah, it's it's tricky. It's um, a little bit, you know, complicated sometimes to use these modal verbs. But the idea behind them is that they are going to be helping us um, to express, as I said before, possibilities or to express obligations or to express situations that are like an advice or things that are um, regarding permission. So those are like the main objectives that we have when we use modal verbs. Um, you guys have used may and might. Those are similar in a way, but also very, very different because might is used with a possibility uh, of something that is not under your control. And may is used with a, um, how can we refer to this? May is used mostly as a permission device. You know, it's not as a possibility, but more as a permission. The thing is that may is a little bit more certain. Like when you use may, you are more certain that you're gonna get the permission, get the permission. But when you use might, it's very hard. Like it's very complicated. Um, to to get to the um 
whatchamacallit, to get to the solution or the resolve that you want, okay? That you have an expectation of what you want to get, but with might is like you are very uncertain. Like the permission is very hard for you to get it or the availability of you doing the thing that you were supposed to do is very hard. So there is, as I said, a difference between those two. Um, the same, something that happens with can and could is that many people say that could is the past of can, but not necessarily. It works like that only when it comes as a, um, how can I say this? When it comes to be uh, an ability, like for example, when you mentioned something that you were able to do, you, you say it with could, okay? I could ride a bike when I was younger. I no longer can. Entonces, ahí sí puede funcionar, ¿verdad? El could como el pasado del can, pero no es que todo el tiempo. A veces, igual, could se utiliza en el presente. O sea, yo puedo decir algo como, I could help you if you want, ¿sí? Podría ayudarte si quieres. That's a possibility in the present. So, could is not necessarily the past of can. Esto simplemente es como para aclarar un poco, ¿verdad? Algunas de las dudas o problemas que a veces eh, se dan con los verbos modales, porque muchas personas creen en esos, más que todo esas, esas dos cosas, que um, el verbo modal may y might son iguales, y por otro lado que, um, que can y could también, ¿verdad? Son uno el pasado del otro. Y si bien es cierto que se puede, en el caso del can y el could, se puede utilizar could como el pasado de can, no es todo el tiempo. No es así, ¿verdad? Como la regla del verbo mismo. Pero bueno. Um, so, I think that we're not necessarily going to be getting started with this, with uh, verbs of belief. The only thing that I'm going to do right now is that I'm going to read them but we are going to get started with the topic tomorrow. So we're not um, necessarily going to be working on this right now, but the verbs of belief are the following. We can use the verb assume, we can use the verb be certain, we can use the verb be positive, we can use the verb be sure, we can use the verb bet, we can use the verb doubt, we can use the verb figure, we can use the verb guess, we can use the verb have a hunch, we can use the verb how, uh, know for a fact. We can use the verb suppose, and we can also use the verb suspect. So, so verbs of belief are verbs that we use when we are having a conversation about how sure we are about a situation. So those are like the main uses that we have for these sorts of verbs. And tomorrow, as I said, we're going to be discussing them. Um, wait, wait. In a, a,